Armored Vehicle Basics. This is an introduction to the Armored Vehicle webinar series. The series will be separated into modules. Each module will cover the basics. In the upcoming months, we will cover the concept of seams and gaps, run flats, how to determine payload capacity, ballistic designations, center of gravity, and how it affects performance, the effects of armor on tires, and how armor affects the driving task. The ISDA Resource Center will also present webinars on surveillance detection, executive vehicles, and basic security driving, secure transportation. At all costs, avoid this phrase. As a professional, never use the words bulletproof. This phrase has caused many problems. It simply creates a false sense of security. In my 40 years in the business, I've seen secure transportation plans altered because the principal felt that they were in a vehicle that was impregnable. Armored vehicles are designed to do one thing, buy you time. You must do something with that time. The driver must have the skill and the vehicle must have the capability to remove themselves from the kill zone. This needs to be said. The best scenario is don't be in the kill zone. This is the reason why surveillance detection training is a must. The takeaway is is that you can't sit in the kill zone and make obscene gestures at the enemy. Capability of the vehicle driver combination is called the driver's triangle. The security driver triangle or the package has been around for decades. If there is a failure, failure defined as the vehicle fails and you fail, that's caused by one of three things. Either the driver failed, the vehicle failed, or you were in an environment that you couldn't get out of. You can be a good driver, but if you're in an armored car that does not do its job, you will not get the opportunity to drive out of the kill zone. You can have the best armored car made, and we'll define what that means later. You can have a good driver. We will define what that means later. But if you are in a kill zone that you cannot drive out of, it's over. An armored vehicle must have the capability of absorbing the initial blast and still have the capability of driving out of the kill zone. The picture is of a recent attack in Mexico. Look at the vehicles, tires shot out, multiple hits, and the windows, the windshield, but yet it still drove out of the kill zone. That's the definition of a vehicle working. Again, it was an armored car that was able to absorb the initial fire and drive out of the kill zone. That's all you can ask the car to do. Let me be repetitive. From the previous slide, an armored vehicle is part of the security triangle. It's part of the package. Because you are in an armored car, you cannot ignore the other two factors. The driver has to have the skill to drive out of the kill zone, and you can't drive into an environment that no matter what, you can't drive out of. This is another recent attack in Mexico. As we mentioned, keep in mind that the glass is bullet resistant, not bullet proof. Again, to be repetitive, the car is designed to absorb the initial burst of fire and have the capability to drive out nothing else. Anything more than that, consider it a gift. History also says that if a car is attacked, specifically an armored car, they will concentrate their fire on the glass and in the area of the driver. The quickest way to stop the car and complete the attack is to kill the driver. This is a rocket attack on an armored car. And there's probably no better example of how much a car can take. The car took a direct hit from an RPG-7 rocket. This is a factory armored Mercedes-Benz. After the attack, the driver drove the vehicle from the kill zone. There were multiple attackers involved and multiple cars involved. With all the gunfire and rocket attacks, 
and in this direct hit, the driver still drove the car from the kill zone. After the attack, the vehicle door still opened, run flats worked, and everybody survived the attack. There was a considerable amount of luck involved. The rocket penetrated the hood of the car, missed all the engine components, and hit the ground. My guess would be if the rocket was maybe three inches in any other direction, it would have hit a major engine component and I don't think the results would have been the same. But still, the car took one hellacious hit and was able to drive away. This is a good example of what doesn't work. If you look at point A and right below it, you can see where the terrorist was shooting. The principal was sitting in the back seat of the car. Where the roof meets the back windshield is called a seam. In every place there is a seam on an armored car, that is considered a gap. There needs to be an overlapping piece of armor in all areas where there are seams and gaps. On this car, there was no armor on the seam and gap connecting the roof to the back window. Points F and B are places where a round found that gap that was not armored and entered the vehicle with the end result of those rounds hitting the occupant and killing him. This is a most critical aspect of armored vehicle manufacturing. The next webinar will cover scenes and gaps in detail. Decision making process. Depending on your position, you may or may not have any say in this decision making process. You may be the guy that they say, hey you, drive this car. Either way, it's a good idea to understand the process. Vehicle selection. The vehicle needs to blend into the environment it's driving through and have the ability to accept the additional weight of the armor. That will be a subject of an upcoming seminar. The manufacturing process. The most important part of that is seams and gaps. In the previous PowerPoint, we talked about that. It is what killed the occupant of the car. There was a complete failure of the system of seams and gaps. This will be the subject of the next seminar. Load capacity. This is not just how much armor can it accept. It is also the amount of weight you carry. How many passengers do you have? How much luggage are you going to carry? How much ammo do you carry? What is the purpose of the vehicle? That defines how much weight you can put on and it defines what type of a vehicle will work and what won't work. Again, this will be a discussion of an upcoming seminar. Height of center of gravity and how that affects handling and vehicle characteristics. There is this misconception about center of gravity. What is as important as the center of gravity is the weight in the vehicle in relationship to the center of gravity. We will also be doing a seminar on this subject.